This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa. Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S, dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book One The Beginnings. Book One, Chapter Five, The Baptism of the Penguins. After having drifted for an hour, the holy man approached a narrow strand shut in by steep mountains. He went along the coast for a whole day and a night, passing around the reef which formed an insuperable barrier. He discovered in this way that it was a round island in the middle of which rose a mountain crowned with clouds. He joyfully breathed the fresh breath of the moist air. Rain fell, and this rain was so pleasant that the holy man said to the Lord, Lord, this is the island of tears, the island of contrition. The strand was deserted. Worn out by fatigue and hunger, he sat down on a rock in the hollow of which there lay some yellow eggs, marked with black spots, and about as large as those of a swan. But he did not touch them, saying, Birds are the living praises of God. I should not like a single one of these praises to be lacking through me. And he munched the lichens which he tore from the crannies of the rocks. The holy man had gone almost entirely round the island without meeting any inhabitants, when he came to a vast amphitheatre formed of black and red rocks, whose summits became tinged with blue as they rose toward the clouds, and they were filled with sonorous cascades. The reflection from the polar ice had hurt the old man's eyes, but a feeble gleam of light still shone through his swollen eyelids. He distinguished animated forms which filled the rocks, in stages, like a crowd of men on the tiers of an amphitheatre, and at the same time his ears, deafened by the continual noises of the sea, heard a feeble sound of voices. Thinking that what he saw were men living under the natural law, and that the Lord had sent him to teach the divine law, he preached the gospel to them. Mounted on a lofty stone in the midst of the wild circus, "'Inhabitants of this island,' said he, "'although you be of small stature, you look less like a band of fishermen and mariners than like the senate of a judicious republic. By your gravity, your silence, your tranquil deportment, you form on this wild rock an assembly comparable to the conscript fathers at Rome, deliberating in the temple of victory.' or rather to the philosophers of Athens disputing on the benches of the Areopagus. Doubtless you possess neither their science nor their genius, but perhaps in the sight of God you are their superiors. I believe that you are simple and good. As I went round your island I saw no image of murder, no sign of carnage, no enemies' heads or scalps hung from a lofty pole or nailed to the doors of your villages. You appear to me to have no arts, and not to work in metals. But your hearts are pure, and your hands are innocent, and the truth will easily enter into your souls. Now what he had taken for men of small stature, but of grave bearing, were penguins, whom the spring had gathered together, and who were ranged in couples on the natural steps of the rock, erect in the majesty of their large white bellies. From moment to moment they moved their winglets like arms, and uttered peaceful cries. They did not fear men, for they did not know them, and had never received any harm from them. And there was in the monk a certain gentleness that reassured the most timid animals, and that pleased these penguins extremely. With a friendly curiosity they turned towards him with their little round eyes, lengthened in front by a white oval spot, that gave something odd and human to their appearance. Touched by their attention, the holy man taught them the gospel. Inhabitants of this island, the earthly day that has just risen over your rocks is the image of the heavenly day that rises in your souls. For I bring you the inner light. I bring you the light and heat of the soul. Just as the sun melts the ice of your mountains, so Jesus Christ will melt the ice of your hearts." Thus the old man spoke. As everywhere throughout nature, voice calls to voice, 
as all which breathes in the light of day loves alternate strains, these penguins answered the old man by the sounds of their throats, and their voices were soft, for it was the season of their loves. The holy man, persuaded that they belonged to some idolatrous people, and that in their own language they gave adherence to the Christian faith, invited them to receive baptism. "'I think,' said he to them, "'that you bathe often, for all the hollows of the rocks are full of pure water. And as I came to your assembly I saw several of you plunging into these natural baths. Now purity of body is the image of spiritual purity.' and he taught them the origin, the nature, and the effects of baptism. Baptism, said he to them, is adoption, new birth, regeneration, illumination. And he explained each of these points to them in succession. Then having previously blessed the water that fell from the cascades, and recited the exorcisms, he baptized those whom he had just taught, pouring on each of their heads a drop of pure water, and pronouncing the sacred words. And thus for three days and three nights he baptized the birds. End of chapter 5